Hey everyone, welcome back to the second part in my Font Forge Masterclass series. If you haven't already seen the first part, go ahead and watch that first. I would highly recommend it. We run over how to install Font Forge and sort of an introduction and the basics of the software. I'll put a link in the description and a card up in the corner. Now, in this part of the series, we're going to run over how you import SVG files from something like Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape. If you have the file set up properly, you can actually just click import here, set your format to SVG and click your file and then boom, that's it. But uh, you do have to set up your document properly. So I have a brand new file here in Inkscape and what we're going to want to do is go into file document properties and set the units to pixels and set the width to 1000 and the height to 1000 which is the M size that FontForge uses. It's just the default size of each character. So there we go. Now we have it set to that. We can just close out of here. Now, if you actually go into a letter here in FontForge, you can see that there's the baseline and then there's the descending line. Now, if you wanna line up your letters with the baseline here, you're gonna have to uh, put a guideline in your vector editing software so you can design your characters so that they keep the baseline in mind. Now, if you actually see this descending line is at 200, that's actually negative 200. So if we take this descending line and consider it to be zero, then this baseline is 200 uh, units up. And then this line here at the top is a thousand up. Now, if you remember our document is a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. So we're gonna wanna have to put a rectangle in here. Doesn't matter what size, cause we're just gonna change the height and width up here. We're gonna change, I'm gonna change the width to a thousand and make sure it's in pixels. 1000 and the height to 200. And then I'm just gonna give it a fill of a slightly lighter gray color. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure it has no stroke. And I'm going to go here into the align and distribute menu set it relative to page and we're just going to put it on the bottom and in the middle so now this top line here is the baseline so if we wanted to design a letter then we would want to keep that in mind so if i was doing the letter a kind of how i already had it you could see i would want to draw from that line right there and there we go now when you want to export your file you want to make sure that your entire letter is ex one path. You can do that, for instance, if you have multiple paths, like I'll just create a few here. If you have multiple paths like this that are intersecting each other to create the shape, you're gonna wanna select both of them by shift clicking and go into path union to combine them together. That's very important. You wanna make sure that they're combined together. The no another important thing is that you disable stroke and enable fill and just set it to a black color. Now, in the case that you're actually using the stroke to define your character, for instance, instead of drawing the A like this, how I was earlier, if you were instead just drawing a single line and then using the stroke to actually define your letter, you're going to want to convert that to a path. So we're going to go to path, stroke to path, and then you can see that you have on that shape, no stroke and it's fill because it has converted that stroke into a path that FontForge can understand. So you're gonna wanna make sure that your every shape is combined together and that they are all uh, paths and not strokes, which you can convert anything you have set up just like that. Then you're gonna wanna line it up with your guideline. And if you have any other guidelines, for instance, if you had added an X height or anything else like that, you could go ahead and also add that in here. Once you're done with that, you're going to want to delete this box and then save at, save a copy or save as as a plain SVG file. And then just you can go ahead and undo that. So when you're working on each of your characters, you can go ahead and save using the, for instance, the Adobe Illustrator format or the Inkscape format. But once you want to import into FontForge, you're going to go file, save as, or save a copy, and save a version that does not have any of the guidelines, and that is uh, a plain SVG file. And if you have that all set up right, you can simply pop into a letter here, file, import, 
and then all your work will transfer transfer perfectly and there we go that's pretty simple now once again this was a quick tutorial i'm going to be releasing the next part pretty soon and that's going to be running over the basics of kerning and tables in fontforge how fonts deal with their data all right thanks for watching if you like the video go ahead and leave it a like and if you're feeling especially nice, go ahead and subscribe. And with that, I will see you guys later.